Hello, hello, and welcome to the Moana Adams podcast, where we talk all things travel, wellness, and teenage girl. I'm your host, Moana, a full-time travel teen. I have a great episode for you this week, so let's get into it. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome to another episode. I am so excited. I said that last episode. But it's true. I am also excited for this episode because we are talking about gratitude and expressing gratitude and practicing gratitude and what you're thankful for and all things gratitude. And I can't wait because I practice gratitude almost every day. No one does anything every single day. At least very few people. And if you can, good for you. But I can't. And I try, but it doesn't happen every day. Anyway, we're talking about five ways that you can practice gratitude in your daily life and why you should practice gratitude and the benefits of practicing gratitude. I also have a little challenge for you at the end of this episode, so make sure to stick around and hear about that. Before we get into that, where is Moana? I am, once again, just like the last episode in New Hampshire. I'm recording these episodes back to back. But if you didn't hear that episode, we are in New Hampshire, our 37th out of 48th state. Tomorrow we head to Maine, and New Hampshire is absolutely beautiful. I said in the last episode, it's probably in my top 10 states, and I'm excited to come back here one day because it's so gorgeous, especially because it's fall, the leaves are changing, and I'm just loving it. What I'm grateful for, (laughs) we're talking about gratitude, but we always do gratefuls at the beginning of the episode. And what I'm grateful for right now is my journal. I just finished recording the last episode, which was about journaling. And I'm very grateful that I'm able to have a nice journal that I love and that motivates me to open it up in the morning and get all my thoughts down on paper. So if you're interested in hearing more about journaling, head back to the last episode where I talk about why and how to start journaling. What I am currently loving. Right now, I'm loving spending time outside. It's a really nice temperature here in New Hampshire. All week long it has been, other than a little bit of rain. And I've just really loved it. I've been taking my computer outside and doing school, calling my mom and friends back home, and just enjoying the cool weather. I am not the biggest fan of summer. I tend to get overheated really easily, and I prefer cooler weather where I can wear sweatpants and a hoodie and cozy up on the couch rather than blazing, melting summer heat and sweating. So I love spending time outside now that it's cooled down and I can soak up the sun and just enjoy the cool weather. All right, let's get into the bulk of the episode. Gratitude. I think a lot of people associate gratitude with Thanksgiving. I don't. I associate gratitude with positivity and enjoying and embracing where I am now while still working towards what I want in the future. I'm excited to share this with you. So let's start off with why you should start gratitude. Moana. Why am I going to practice gratitude daily? What are the benefits? Why? Number one, it improves your mood. When you're looking at the positives in your life and you're looking at the good things, it's obviously going to improve your mood. You're embracing the, you're embracing the things that you have, even if you still want more and that's fine, but taking a second to step back and look at what's in front of you and enjoying and being thankful that you have that because not everybody does is just so important. I think that life moves so quickly and especially with social media, we see everybody has their their dream life and everybody's making progress. They're coming out with new content. They're doing all these different things. And first of all, social media is a highlight reel. It's the best parts of someone's life. 
So it's important to not get too caught up in what everyone else has. And one way you can do that is look what you do have because what you have now might be what you wish you had a year ago, what you wish you had a month ago. You don't want to miss what's going on right in front of you. The next thing is it will make you less likely to become burnt out. I tend to get burnt out very easily because when I find something that I'm excited about and am motivated to do, I'll go full send and I'll put all my time, all my energy into doing that thing until I get tired of it, I get bored, I'm unmotivated, and I burn out. But when I step back and look at where I am, the progress I've made, it definitely helps me avoid that burnout. Let's get into different ways that you can practice gratitude. The first way is to put it in your journaling format. I talked about this in the last episode, and this is something that I do every time I journal. But at the top of the page, I write, I am grateful for, and I write, I list three things that I'm grateful for in that moment. It's okay if it repeats. Don't be too repetitive, but look at yesterday, look at your day, and write just three things you're grateful for every time you journal. I really enjoy keeping this at the top of the page because it keeps me consistent, and I know when I open up my journal, I'm going to write my gratitude down. Then I'm checking two things off my list of little daily habits that make me feel like my best self. Journaling and practicing gratitude both at once. When you write in your journal, you're writing it out. And I think it's a, there's a big difference between just thinking it or saying it than writing it out on a piece of paper. That piece of paper is going to last however long. But you're actually being able to look at that and think about, like, wow, like, I have these things. Maybe not everybody does. And I'm really appreciative of the things that I do have. Right? Okay. The second thing is actually something that's newer to me. My parents recently did a health and wellness challenge with their team. And I participated, and one of the options of things that you could do was send a grateful message to someone once a day. It had to be someone different each day. But the idea is that you send a text message to someone who you're grateful for and tell them how grateful grateful you are for them and how much you appreciate them and everything you do for them. You thank them for what they have done for you and let them know that they're important, that they're loved, that you truly do appreciate what they're doing for you. It's got to be a nice, long, juicy, emotional paragraph. You're not just going to text your best friend, your mom, and be like, I'm grateful for you. Is that going to, is that a good thing to do? Yes, absolutely. But it's just not the same as when you write that, you really dig deep and write that good, strong paragraph that they're going to read and maybe even go into tears about. I've heard plenty of people on the team say that they have gone to tears or the person they're sending it has gone to tears because they're just so appreciative of each other. Not only does it make them feel good, but it's going to make you feel good and it's just going to brighten their day and your day. The third way that you can practice gratitude is saying it at dinner. I think that every family should have their own dinner time tradition, and my family's dinner time tradition is to say what we're grateful for. It used to only be one thing, and now we say two because one thing got too easy and repetitive, but every night before we eat, we say what we're grateful for, and I really love this because it includes the whole family, so everyone's making sure that everyone in the family is keeping each other accountable and they're practicing their gratitude and it definitely starts conversations it never fails that Everest my little sister will always say I'm grateful for mommy daddy brother sister maverick ranger ghost and lists everyone in our family and it's always so fun and just brings everyone's mood up 
I think there's a difference between what we say we're grateful for to other people and what we write down or think privately that we're grateful for. So I love to mix and match different forms of gratitude because you might be grateful for something that you want to use in practicing gratitude, but you don't want to say that to your whole family or to anybody else, which is something that you would write in your journal and say you're grateful for. But if it's Maybe if you are grateful for someone in the family because they did this or that for you today, or maybe you just do appreciate them, maybe you just really are appreciative of them, then you can let them know. And it's not, I think a lot of people worry about it being awkward, especially if you have bad social anxiety, and it's not. Especially when you do it every night before dinner, it gets easier, and honestly, it's a lot of fun because you never know what anyone else is going to say. The fourth and second to last way is to simply say thank you. You have to say it to their face or you can write a letter or thank you note, but I feel like when someone does something for you, you should thank them always. Or if they, if, or if someone gifts something to you, you should always thank them. My parents have always taught us After Christmas or birthday, we write thank you letters to all of our family and friends who sent us gifts because we want to show them that we appreciate them and that we actually are excited about what they got that got us. Because sometimes I think people get thrown off by gifts sometimes. They're either it's not exactly what they were expecting or wanting. It instantly goes into a want and a need for something else. And you don't recognize, hey, this person not only wanted to get you a gift and got you a gift, but they thought about what they were getting you and took the time or the money to make or buy that gift for you and then possibly even wrap it, hold on to it until that holiday came around and give it to you. And you just need to thank them for all that hard work that they put in to taking care of you, making sure you felt loved, and celebrating you. It, again, is something that will not only make you feel good, but it makes them feel good too. So it's spreading gratitude and sharing that you're thankful and that you appreciate what they did. So all you have to do is say thank you. Say it to their face or write a card, but simply say thank you. It's a super simple, easy way to practice gratitude. Anyone can do it. And you can even say thank you to strangers when someone holds the door open for you. Don't ignore them. Say thank you. Look at their face too, because sometimes, and I know I'm guilty of this, someone will hold the door open for me and then I get nervous and I won't want to look at them or like make conversation with them or anything like that. And I get embarrassed for some odd reason. I'm working on it. But if I look up and say thank you, then the nerves are gone. And even brighten their day because you're thanking them for what they did. And it'll brighten their mood and improve their mood too. The fifth and final way is also another thing that is new to me. And it's mindful hugs. Now, if you don't know what this is, I didn't either. So, until a couple of weeks ago. But basically, when you go to hug someone, you hold on for a little bit longer and you can say it out loud I don't usually do but think about it in your head and just take a minute breathe you know hold on to them and think about your relationship with them and what they've done for you and appreciate that relationship because not not everyone has those that kind of support system that kind of relationship just hold on a little bit longer. It might surprise them for a second, but they'll still hold on, and it might even get them thinking about gratitude, even if you don't say anything. If you're really close with that person, and I know even the people that I'm close to, I have a hard time doing this, but you can also say that you're grateful for them, and say that you appreciate them, and just let them know. They won't always be around, So appreciate the time you have with them and spend it wisely, spend quality time, and just take a minute and appreciate that person and your relationship with them. 
Now, those are the five ways to practice gratitude daily. First way is to add it to your journaling format. Second way is to send a gratitude message. Third, say it at dinner. Fourth, simply just say thank you. And fifth, mindful hugs. Now, I said at the beginning of this episode, I have a challenge for you. If you head over to Instagram, you'll see a highlight on the Milana Adams podcast Instagram that says gratitude and it might say gratitude challenge. I don't remember, but it has all the information. Basically, all you have to do is write down one thing you're grateful for every day of November. November is the month of gratitude, so pick up a piece of paper, put it in your journal, even use your phone. If you know you're going to remember, set an alarm for a time that you know you have a chance. Just write one thing you're grateful for. You cannot have any repeats. And you can also go into that story and at the end, I think there's only three pages in it. At the end, there's a template that you can screenshot and post to your story and add in what you're grateful for. I will link it in the show notes. The Instagram will be linked in the show notes. And if you mention or tag the Mona Adams podcast on Instagram, I will be sure to share it. And let's share what we're grateful for. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to give this podcast a rate and review, as well as follow me on all my socials linked in the show notes. Don't forget to drink some water, and I'll talk to you later.